Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are working on my wife's 2011 Mercedes-Benz GL350. It's got the uh, 3 liter diesel in it. It's leaking oil out of the uh, oil filter housing. Um, how I discovered this leak is I thoroughly cleaned the vehicle, the engine bay, and I found oil on the power steering pump, uh, the pulley. Oil's flung all the way around the engine bay because oil's dripping down and hitting the serpentine belt. So if you need to change your serpentine belt or your oil filter housing on the OM642 engine. Uh, this one's in a GL350, but it'd be very similar for the other platforms. Uh, this will be the video for you, okay? So we're gonna be taking the belt off, changing the housing, new housing, we're putting the belt back on. Pretty, pretty straightforward from what I can tell, but um, I've never done this procedure before. It's gonna be very in depth, um, and I'm hoping I get a lot of good uh, video footage because there's not much out there on this uh, procedure. So I'll quit rambling. Uh, this is going to be probably like a voiceover um, after the fact kind of thing, and I'm going to explain everything, all the tools, torque specs, that kind of stuff. Alrighty, so let's get into it. All right, guys. So uh, setting it off here, we are going to be. I'm going to drain the oil on this uh, vehicle. I would suggest to you guys too, it'll make less of a mess when you remove the oil filter housing. Um, there's an underbelly uh, shroud on here. You have to remove some clips, pull the shroud out, and it's a 13 millimeter bolt. Um, when I did this, I got the vehicle super hot. I went on the highway, uh, drove home from my sister-in-law's, and I popped the, the uh, drain bolt there, let it drain out, come on up to the oil filter housing here. It's this big, uh, you can use a huge socket. They sell them. I'll put a link in the description, but for me, I just throw a rag over and just gently with uh, oil, regular old, old uh, oil filter pliers, I just open it up a little bit. And, uh, you know, you don't got to go too crazy or nothing. Here's a quick little shot from above looking down. You can see that little painted uh, cross member there. That usually has oil on it. And then here's another shot from the bottom looking up. You can see, uh, you can't see it there, but the power steering pump's just above that pulley there. And uh, it's usually covered in oil. Yeah, so what I did is I ended up uh, you know, pulling the drain bolt out, but I also opened the oil filter housing just a little bit. And I let the oil drain all night long. At least, uh, I'd say at least a solid eight hours. Tried to get all the oil out. All right, so now you're going to go into the engine bay here, remove the rubber piece on the uh, strut tower there. Just tuck that out of the way. You got four bolts securing the strut tower to the uh, vehicle. It's gonna be an E16 on the uh, nut side and the bolt head is gonna be uh, just a 5 8 wrench just to hold it there. You will have to remove this tiny little uh, bolt holding this uh, little piece of metal. Uh, so that's secured to the strut tower as well. I think you gotta, you just bend that out of the way nice and easy. And that gives you access to your last bolt. Head on over to the other side here, take your other two bolts out, and uh, you gotta kind of got to wiggle it a little bit and pull that strut tire out of there. Next up we have the mass airflow sensors. They can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. You, uh, you kind of pinch the two tabs in, and then you just get the smallest flathead screwdriver. You just give it a little wiggle, uh, rotate your hand you know, with the screwdriver, and just pop those two uh, mass airflow sensors, one for the left, one for the right. Last connector on the uh, intake here is the PCV valve, the positive crankcase ventilation. It basically just kind of sits inside of the uh, Y pipe there. And it comes from the uh, you know, underneath the firewall, and you'll have to remove that. Let's give it a wiggle. And then you're ready to remove the actual Y pipe from the turbocharger. Once you got all those clamps off, just give it a wiggle, come straight out. Be prepared, there usually is a little puddle of oil sitting there waiting for you which is the main reason why I plan on putting an oil catch can on this uh, truck here, so stay tuned for that. Now we need to get at this uh, intercooler pipe here. I'm using a 10 millimeter combo wrench. You need the box end to get, come up and over the stud. If you have an E10 uh, combo wrench, that's probably the right tool to use, but this works just fine for me. You've got this black hose that pins to the intercooler pipe. It's just got this little black uh, clip on it, you just kind of wiggle it up and, and pull it off. And that'll let you uh, start to free up this uh, intercooler pipe. Next up we have a little Phillips uh, screw that secures the uh, plastic intercooler pipe to the aluminum. 
So remove the one bolt there and you kind of just pull this little, uh, kind of like a little coupler there. Pull that out and set her off to the side. Next we got two more E10s securing that uh, uh, plastic connector to the block, I think it is. Or actually I think it one threads right into the oil filter housing. Uh, there's one tucked away down in there you can see. I'll try and zoom in for you. Yeah, just be careful when you remove the bottom bolt there, it is a longer one. The, the longer bolt is for the bottom and the short one is uh, for the top. All right, now I know it's it's tricky to see these uh, bolts from the video. It's not easy to get a camera in there. Once you remove the two bolts holding that plastic pipe on, there's that little clip there, and that's what clips the plastic pipe to the rubber pipe. When I just used a pair of needle nose, I was able to get underneath it, kind of pull up and wiggle, it pops right off there. Then that frees up the uh, plastic piece to be removed. That gives us access to the serpentine belt. Now we're ready to release tension on the belt. So I've got a 17 millimeter pinned on the tensioner bolt, followed up with a 19 millimeter for leverage. Uh, there's a nice little picture there of where the stud is on the side of the tensioner. And you're going to be pushing down. So if you had a small pipe, you could go over your wrench. But for me, I just put a 19 millimeter on the 17. And that gave me enough uh, leverage to open this up. So yeah, you're going to uh, push down on it. That's going to open it up. And you're going to find yourself a little carriage bolt. I got a quarter inch carriage bolt here and then when you apply tension like that you're going to take your carriage bolt and slide it into the uh, caging slot. Um, that's so that you can keep tension off the belt while you remove it. You, you know you only got two hands after all. So yeah push down on that and I think I got a little close up here. Yeah there it is. You just slide that quarter inch bolt in there or any other small bolt you can fit in there and that will uh, That'll keep the tension off the belt. Now we're ready to remove the serpentine or super serpentine. I can never remember which one it is. Correct me in the comments. <laughs> um, remove the uh, dry belt. It's pretty straightforward. You just pull it off all the pulleys. Now I do remember when I was doing it, I ended up kind of bringing it around the left side of the engine near the alternator. So the right side of the engine on your left looking at the engine. And I kind of, you know, you, you wiggle it around, you pull it, and I think I ended up getting underneath that pipe and uh, feeding it up through that way. Yeah, that ended up being the easiest way for me. And then, uh, yeah, start your little inspection. Now, don't be worried. I do have a belt diagram I'm going to throw up there uh, for you. But it's always a good idea just to have a, uh, have a good look at it before you remove it. I'll just point out now it... It's a really good time to have a look at all your pulleys. Spin them freely, make sure there's no grinding or uh, you know pl play in them. Uh, for me, uh, my power steering actually was kind of making a little bit of noise, not enough to warrant uh, changing it. But you know now I know uh, potentially down the road might have issues. All right, we've hit the portion of the video where we are finally removing the uh, filter housing. So I went ahead and cleaned it out. Um, securing the housing to the block, you're going to have four bolts. The reason we took the serpentine belt off is because one of those bolts kind of trapped underneath the belt. So once you've got your belt off, you're ready to rock and roll. So you got four below and two up top. You can see the two on the top fairly easy. The four below, they're a little bit trickier, but um, you can see them. So they are of different sizes, okay? So a little tip there I learned from a mechanic a, a long while ago is when you're going to remove a part with different bolts, you can always just draw it out, remove the bolt, and kind of just place them on the picture, going right back to where they go. So that's just a little a thing that I do when I'm not 100% sure. Another tip too is to move your oil pan underneath that control arm. Uh, that's where the oil from the housing is going to uh, dribble down. It's not a ton, but uh, definitely just be ready for it. The next thing I did is I cleaned up the area right in between those pulleys there you got a ton of oil so hit it with the brake parts cleaner uh, take a little rag and try to plug those uh, oil passages up for the housing you don't want any uh, parts cleaner and stuff mixed in there yeah just give it a good clean now we're ready to reinstall the new housing so these uh, well, pretty much prefabricated housings like they come with an oil filter in them the top is actually torqued and there's a mine came with an actual line through it indicating you know when it's basically bottomed out and uh, yeah you're ready to uh, install it so I just took a little bit of uh, engine oil there uh, covered it over the gasket 
and carefully lower the housing down into the uh, engine bay there. Kind of wiggle it around all those hoses and uh, get ready to take your E10 and whichever you choose. I, I, I think I chose the, the bottom set of bolts, maybe the top one. And I started, um, started that one. Once you've got your uh, bolts all started, you're ready to hit it with a torque wrench. So the bottom four bolts that bolt the housing to the block, I believe they were 10 and a half. Uh, I did like 12 uh, foot pounds. Remember, these are just small little aluminum E10 bolts, so you don't want to over torque these. It calls for about 10 pounds, so that's what you use. Now the top two bolts that secure the uh, housing to the uh, the top portion, they kind of go into plastic, so you don't, I mean, 10 pounds would be lots for those as well. So you've got your oil uh, housing bolted on, you're good to go. I had some uh, oil trapped in the in the belt there, so I'm just cleaning it out, making sure it's all good. Definitely inspect your belt though, make sure it is legit. Uh, if it is, you're ready to start routing it back on. So here's the belt diagram. Now, you can pause it here and have a good look at it, but it's pretty straightforward. It goes along the outside there, it comes up through around that idler, around the tension bolt, and then number one's the crank there. You're now ready to route your belt back into the uh, truck there. So the same way I removed it on the left side, I put it back in. And yeah, you just put it in, you kind of wiggle it around a little bit, get it on the outside of everything. The last move I did was on the uh, tensioner. And uh, the biggest thing is belts, you just got to make sure you get those grooves lined up on each pulley. Uh, especially that AC pulley. I was having a bit of an issue. I had to uh, take it off again and put it back on. So just make sure it's on there good. Okay, the reinstall, I'm going to kind of move a bit quicker here. So you're going to, you know, push your uh, wrench down, remove your cage bolt. That'll tighten up your belt. You're going to install the clip from the black plastic intercooler pipe to that rubber hose. Uh, you can kind of see it right there on the bottom. And then you're going to install your two bolts. Remember, the longer one goes on the bottom and that short one goes on the top. That one on the top right there was a pecker head. Really make sure you get it lined up and do not cross thread it. Uh, okay, you can actually push down and kind of rotate the whole unit up, and that will uh, help you get your bolt lined up. Okay, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to reinstall your uh, aluminum intercooler pipe. So, you know, you just push it into that plastic piece, you put that clip in, you tighten it with the Phillips, <clears throat> you grab that uh, 10 millimeter, you tighten that stud down to the block. Uh, Jim, when you're pushing in that intercooler pipe to the turbo, just give it a good firm push, okay, because there is that seal in there. Make sure it's in there good. And uh, line that bolt up. And then you're ready to install your white pipe. Alright, we're getting ready to reinstall the Y pipe. Make sure that seal right there I'm playing with is seated fully. It's really important. Uh, you will develop leaks if you do not get this Y pipe into that turbo inlet correctly. Line it up good. Uh, give it a little bit, a couple few wiggles, and just shove her in there. Um, make sure your PCV valve's in a good spot so you can hook it back up. Um, it takes a little bit of uh, messing around, to be honest, but you do want to make sure it's seated all the way back and it's touching the actual turbocharger uh, flange. You'll see it when you when you when you end up doing it. And then what I do is I use my impact gun uh, just to uh, pinch those air filters together because it's really tight, and then. Uh, I just lightly, like, kind of get them started, you know what I mean? And then I go ahead, I go back with my uh, flathead and I do the fine tuning. Um, what else? Make sure you do not over tighten this uh, clamp here at the Y pipe to the turbo inlet because they do crack. And if they crack, you're screwed. <laughs> I haven't done it, but I could definitely see how you, you could. Um, Last thing to do is make sure you plug in your mass airflow sensors, both of them, and give them a little pull there, make sure they're in. Okay, I skipped ahead on the uh, strut tower reassembly. You just put that strut back in, the four bolts, and now you're ready to add your engine oil. So I'm using Rotella T6 540. I don't have any emissions on this truck. Uh, you're calling for eight and a half liters. Okay, so fill her up eight and a half liters there. It should get you right up pretty much halfway up the dipstick if you let it drain good. Okay, then you're ready to fire your truck up. Let the oil circulate there. 
Uh, I had a nasty little chain rattle because I let the oil drain all night. But uh, yeah, definitely let it idle, check the leaks, and make sure you're all good that way. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Uh, we got the oil filter housing changed out. Also changed the serpentine belt. I ended up using the same one, but you could use this video for uh, changing out that belt. Again, it's the OM642 engine. It's in the GL350. And uh, overall, it took about three hours, three or four hours for me. I was filming and I had to uh, take some breaks and do some other stuff. But um, overall, it's not too bad. I would just really, uh, really keep an eye on uh, getting your bolts lined up for your uh, intercooler piping because the piping bolts to the oil filter housing, the actual bracket. It's really tricky to get those little bolts in, keep everything loose, straighten it up, plug it in and uh, tighten it in. And then getting that Y pipe in, like there's no easy way to do that. It's just a pain in the nuts. <laughs> it's the worst design for an air intake system. If I could do it, like if I could do it my own way, I would just eliminate both those air filters, take that whole thing out run a pipe right down the center and just jam a K&N air filter right behind the fan. I just, I just leave it like that. Just one shot straight into the turbo. Um, I may play with that idea. I'm not sure. Anyways, guys, if you own the uh, GL350 or any other uh, V6 uh, Mercedes diesel, definitely subscribe. I've got a ton of more videos coming down the pipe. Basically going to be going bumper to bumper with this truck, just going over everything, making sure it's all, uh, all new for me. It's 2011, so, you know, it's got some kilometers on it, but we, uh, we do like the truck and we're going to invest the time it takes to keep it running. Anyhow, guys, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.